Hello everybody, welcome back. So this is the second part of uh, the video related to the branch and bound approach. In the first section of this video, I explain you graphically how the branch and bound approach works. In this second part of the video, I'm going to give you a more algorithmic approach uh, about how the branch and bound um, approach explores a decision tree where we are implicitly enumerating uh, the solutions, the integral solutions of the problem. And implicit is because we never enumerate all the possible solutions because that's an, an astronomical number. Uh, I just want to illustrate that we just need to explore a small part of that uh, decision tree to find the optimal solution. So uh, the first step of the branch and bound approach was to solve P0. And remember, P0 was the LP relaxation of the MIP formulation that we have. So in this decision tree, the, the root node or node 0 uh, contains the, the P0 problem. And the optimal solution of this problem was x1 equal to 1.3 and x2 equal to 3.2 and the optimal objective function value was 14.8. And since this is a, a, a relaxation of the originally uh, MIP problem, this value of 14.08 is an upper bound to any feasible integral solution that we might get of the original MIP. This means that any, the objective function value of, 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 uh, of the MIP problem is going to be equal to 14.08 uh, or less than that. So that's why this value is an upper bound. And also, since we have fractional values here, we, we need to do something that we call branching. And for, for branching, we choose the x1 variable and we will like to el eliminate this fractional value. So to eliminate this fractional value, we add two new constraints, x1 less or equal to 1, and this defines a new problem, p1, which is p0, and this um, new uh, constraint, and another problem called p2, which is p0, and this the new constraint that is x1 greater or equal to 2. So let's solve p1 and we generate a new node, a node 1. And see what happened? Uh, we have found an integral solution. x1 uh, is equal to 1 and x2 is equal to 3. And the optimal objective function value of this problem is 11.8. And since this is an integral solution, this uh, objective function value of 11.8 is going to be a lower bound to the optimal solution of the original uh, MIP problem. Because it is possible that P2 might contain a better integral solution than this one. And since we don't know, this value of C is going to be a lower bound or the best uh, integral solution found so far. So it's a lower bound to the optimal uh, solution of the MIP problem. And in this particular case, since we have identified uh, integral uh, values uh, uh, for the variables that, that, that we have, we don't need to explore this problem anymore because we, we have an integral solution. So we, we say that we have pruned the tree by integrality. We don't need to explore this leaf anymore. So let's see what happened with P2. Let's solve P2. So when we solve P2, we generate a new node, node 2. And we got uh, a new solution, which is x1 equal to 2 and x2 equal to 0 0.5. Oops, this is fractional. Um, and the value, the optimal value of the objective function is 12.05. So this number is less than this number. So this, this number of 12.05 uh, is giving us a better upper bound to any integral solution that we might get. 
So we are going to update uh, the upper bounds of that we generate uh, in this process of branch and bound. And the best upper bound that we have now is 12.5. Uh, and the best lower bound that we have is 11.8. And remember, we are doing pruning by uh, using these lower and, and upper bounds. So since we have a fractional value here of 0 0.5, we are going to branch on this variable and we are going to generate two new problems, P3 and P4. Uh, both problems are based on P2, and but P3 adds the constraint x2 less or equal to zero. And we are going to solve P3 now with this constraint. So when, when we solve this problem, we get uh, no three, and for this problem, we get a fractional value because x1 is equal to 2.125 and x2 is equal to 0. And the optimal objective function value of this problem is 11.6875. And this problem, since this is, uh, this is the value of the LP relaxation, means that any integer solution that we might have in this problem P3, at most will be equal to 11.6875. So this will be the best integer value that we might get. But observe, this value is less than 11.8, meaning that any integer solution of P3 is going to be worse than the best solution that we have so far. So we can say, that this problem is pruned by bound because this bound that we are getting here is worse than the best bound that we have for the integral value of the mean problem. So we don't need to explore this problem anymore. So let's now solve P4. And if you remember, uh, given the graphical uh, solution that the, I just explained in the first section, this uh, P4 problem is infeasible. So this problem doesn't have any solution. So it doesn't need to be explored anymore. So we say that the problem uh, has been pruned by bound. So now observe that all the leaves of, of this tree have been explored or um, there is nothing else to do. So at this point, we can make the decision about what is the best integer solution that we have found. And the best integer solution that we have found by this branch and bound method is defined by node uh, one, which is solving the problem P1. And the optimal solution is x1 equal to one and x2 equal to three. And the optimal objective function value is 11.8. So uh, in, in this section, I have explained you in a more algorithmic way how the branch and bound method works. So uh, just as a final remarks, branch and bound uh, algorithm is based on two principles. One principle is the branching approach. In the branching uh, approach or principle, basically what we are doing is each time that we identify a fractional uh, value, we branch into two constraints that takes uh, the largest integer that is smaller than the fractional value or the smaller integer that is larger than the fractional value. And we generate two problems based on, this, on these constraints and that's the way we generate new leaves for the uh, decision tree that the branch and bound approach explore. The other principle that we are using is bounding. With bounding, basically, we are able to say if a leaf of the branch and bound tree uh, needs to be further explored or not. So uh, remember, the optimal objective function value of uh, any subproblem in the tree is checked against the current best upper bound of the original MIP and the current best lower bound of the original MIP. So uh, when we explore a leaf, uh, we say, okay, what is the optimal value here? Is this value uh, uh, 
better than the best integer solution and is this value better than the best upper bound and then we make decisions about exploring or not uh, this, this node. So essentially the, the problem will stop when we don't have any leaves of the um, decision tree that we generate during the Balchamp bound approach. So uh, the optimal solution of the MIP problem is uh, the integer solution corresponding to the subproblem with the current best objective function value. And notice that during the bunch and bounce approach, uh, the current uh, best lower bound and the current best upper bound of the original MIP give us information about how close we are from the optimal solution of the original MIP. And this information that we get from this uh, best lower bound and best upper bound is called the gap. It is telling you how far we are from the optimal solution. So many times when you are uh, using uh, branch and bound to solve uh, practical problems, you may say, I, I don't need the optimal solution. Um, a solution that is close uh, clo uh, is equal to 5% or closer to 5% uh, is, is good enough. So that allows us to find very good solutions that not necessarily are optimal um, and, and we can get this solution very fast. So that's all that, uh, that, uh, that we have done and, and in these two sections we have covered one of the methods to solve me problems which is called the branch and bound problem. In the next video we are going to discuss another method that is called cutting planes. Stay tuned. See you next time.